Welcome to the channel, my name is Matias. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the very few stories that I really, really hate. It's One More Day. It was written by J. Michael Straczynski, and I know that there was a very heavy hand from Marvel Editorial on the story. He did the best he could, but he had a mandate. And basically that mandate was to end Peter Parker's marriage to Mary Jane. Basically relaunch the character with a clean slate, and it just feels so unnecessary. Now, the odd thing is that even though I consider this to be the worst Spider-Man story ever, it's probably the best Mephisto story. Because basically he pulls off one of the biggest dick moves in the history of the Marvel Universe. It feels so petty and unnecessary. And Mephisto's really loving every step of this terrible process. Now, prior to this story, we had the Civil War where Spider-Man made public his identity. Now, within the context of that story and in the buildup of that story, it did make sense even though it felt very reckless for Spider-Man. It put a giant target on him and his family. And basically what happens is Kingpin ends up sending an assassin after Peter Parker, but he accidentally ends up shooting Aunt May. Now she's dying in the hospital, and this is how the story starts. Now this story, I have to say, it's well written. The first two or three chapters are very compelling. But basically, the last chapter, it's a real gut punch. So the story starts off, we have Aunt May, she's in the hospital, and Peter Parker gets the real bad news that bills are piling up. He's not able to pay for them. The head doctor of the hospital is trying to help Peter as much as possible because he knows he's Spider-Man and he actually saved his uncle a couple of years back. But the thing is, during this time, Spider-Man is a fugitive because in the Civil War story, Spider-Man ends up rebelling against Iron Man. So now he's on the run. So this doctor is going to do the best he can to cover for Spider-Man, but he can't promise anything. So what happens is Peter Parker actually goes straight to Iron Man. He tells him, look, Aunt May got shot because I revealed my secret identity to the world. You told me to do this. So Tony actually tells Spider-Man, look, I can't help a fugitive with money. They're going to be able to track it back to me. And basically the least that I can do is just let you go today so you can be by your aunt's bedside. Be grateful that I don't throw you into the slammer. And Tony leaves Spider-Man. He's totally flustered over this whole situation now. But obviously Tony Stark is not going to leave Spider-Man high and dry. He actually sends Jarvis with a $2 million check to the hospital. Then Spider-Man goes to Doctor Strange to see if they can use magic to go into the past to try to change the events. And what they discover is that they can't change the events. They cross paths with these very powerful demons. It seems that there's interest into not letting any of these events change. So Spidey leaves the Santum Santorium and comes across this little girl. She has red hair, green eyes. We discover that this young girl is actually Mephisto who has come to make a deal with Spider-Man. We also get a pretty heavy low blow with this appearance that Mephisto takes because this would be how the daughter of Peter Parker and Mary Jane would look if they had a child. Mephisto actually reveals this to Peter Parker at the end of the story. So the thing is that Mephisto just hates the fact that Peter Parker has this loving relationship with Mary Jane. This relationship must end and Spider-Man basically must be miserable forever. Also, as a character, Peter Parker himself will never evolve after this point. Dan Slott had a pretty good run, but after that, I feel like Spider-Man is a character that can't change or evolve or mature. He seems to be stuck always in the same place. And this did not happen when he was with Mary Jane. So what happens is Peter Parker makes a deal with Mephisto. He trades off his marriage for the life of Aunt May. And here we have another thing because Spider-Man doesn't take responsibility for his actions. And it seems he's totally willing to sacrifice his marriage over this whole situation. 
And I know that Aunt May is Spider-Man's mother figure and seemingly retconned to be actually his mother. But it feels so weird and out of character to throw your wife under the bus over this whole situation. I feel like Spider-Man would have found a way out of this whole situation. But here, I know it was editorially mandated. They had the end of the relationship. Mephisto gives them one more night. And then after this, their whole time that they were married basically will be wiped from everyone's memory. Spider-Man's identity also will be wiped from everyone's memory. So basically, we get a Spider-Man reboot with the next big era of Spider-Man, which would be the brand new day era. So also what kills me in this story is that in this last chapter, not only Peter Parker seems to act out of character, Mary Jane too. So just to close off with this video with some final thoughts, I feel like it would have been better to kill off Aunt May and have Spider-Man deal with that whole situation and grow and evolve and actually mature also see the evolution of his relationship with mary jane see where that would take us but that never happened i have never gotten around to reading the renew your vows series so i'm pretty intrigued with that i hope it's really good so i'm gonna leave this video here i hope you guys liked it see you guys next time bye